Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where today you join me at Manhart to take a look and most importantly a listen to the Manhart MHZ4 440. Now this is based on the BMW Z4 M40i, which of course is the sister car to one I recently took delivery of, the Toyota GR Supra. Now the reason that is relevant is because I cannot wait to get this fired up for you. I've just had a listen and this car sounds insane. We're going to have a look around it, talk about the modifications by Manhart and then take it out for a drive to experience it on the roads, to experience the sound of this engine. So let's do it then. Let's check out the Manhart. MHZ4 440. To get straight to this then, I think just about everybody knows that the new BMW Z4 and the new Toyota GR Supra were developed and engineered in partnership between BMW and Toyota. There's been a lot of talk about the tuning that can be done on the new fifth generation Supra, but given there's so much in common between the two cars, why not on the Z4 as well, which is exactly what Manhart have done with this, the new MH Z4 440. Now the 440, as the name suggests, is down to the car now having four 440 horsepower, up 100 from the standard 340, but also torque is taken from 500 newton meters to 610. So I'm expecting this to be quite a powerful little thing out and about on the roads, but the thing that particularly stands out to me is the exhaust system around the rear. Now the car is fitted currently with the export system. It's a stainless system with new 90 millimeter tailpipes, the quad tailpipes, two on each side, but it sounds mega. It's finished in the black, with the satin gold stripes Manhart's launch livery specification. I parked it with a convertible roof down just for the moment. It also has the Manhart concave one wheels and new H&R lowering springs sitting 30 millimeters lower than standard. The finish though of this car, how we're looking at it right now, is really quite menacing. But I think we should basically waste no further time. Let's come and have a quick listen to this and prepare to be quite surprised. It is a very, very good sounding thing. So a step in here, let's turn on the ignition, make sure we're in sport mode. Okay, it's time then, have a little listen to this. How about that for a startup? Just let me give it a few quick little blips. What is this? That noise, those cracks, we are literally talking something like 2,000 RPM here. Up towards three, the sound, obviously we're indoors at the moment, but we will take it out to experience plenty more of that. Now, a lot of the interior, familiar to me, very similar to the Supra. We can talk more about that. This is my first time driving a new Z4 since taking delivery of mine. We have the Manhart badge in the center of the airbag, but we will get this car outdoors to take it for a drive to experience a bit more of this and think about what I'm gonna have to do with my car. first 30 seconds I'm going to be driving the car in comfort mode then we're very quickly going to get into sport or sport plus where believe me it is going to come alive but this is really a car with two characters the comfort side of things is very gentle relaxed quiet even with the roof down you can barely hear any of the exhaust just cruising along and yes I apologize if it's quite windy but it's dry at the moment we can't not drive this car with the roof down right at this moment but if we put the car then into sport sport plus and let's say we go manual and start dropping some gears. That's first. What is this thing? Oh, -hoo -hoo! and it's quick. Those noises. I mean, the Z4 is slightly heavier than the Supra anyway with the roof mechanism, but 100 horsepower makes this a lot quicker. And those downshift noises. It's just ridiculous. I love this. Unfortunately, you can't do this everywhere. And in the future, we definitely can't do this. As I often say in my videos, right now, well, we still can. I wonder if I could fit literally this exhaust system onto the Supra, because that would be so epic. This is all you need. 
planted, it's controlled, and it has a lot of power, a lot of power. It's just a really fun car to drive, and it's what I love as well about the Supra. If you think about this, yes, there are differences between the cars, but they basically share the three liter twin scroll turbo, inline six, same platform. There are, there are differences in the way they are engineered if you get down to the specifics. One, of course, is a convertible. One is a coupe. This being a convertible, though, means we hear all of this noise, just all of it. And it's, I mean, it's not that far behind us because it's such a small car, such a small platform, small size overall. Under the trees on these tight, small little roads. <laughs> There's that fizz of the turbo as well going on, but the car is so easy to position. The Z4 and Supra share that in common. They are just easy sports cars for a countryside drive. This little boost in power is very welcome as well. I think any more when you start entering the realms of, well, it being a bit mental and mad to actually drive, but at this level, You've got more than enough, some more mid-gear, kind of in-gear acceleration in terms of the torque. And in fact, to quote some numbers for you, the 100 to 200 kilometer per hour time, which would be 62 to 124 miles per hour, stock was 11.5, and Manhart say this is 8.3, I think. Three seconds faster, about 30% quicker. That's, <laughs> that's insane. That's very, very quick. So, to actually experience that, we're going to have to take the car to somewhere where we can do a lot more of this, out maybe onto the autobahns. Just hovering in first gear, let's give one press of ESC, which puts it into sport traction mode, and then... Honestly, it's crazy, but one of the craziest things is the noise that you can make the car do. Just let it overrun. <laughs> Wait for it, wait for it, keep waiting. And then you get to go again. I am doing the best possible job of finding the middle of the countryside for this, of course, given the sound that this thing is making. Wow! That's ballistic! It's about to be autobahn time, which means I am going to put the roof up because it is going to get very, very windy, and this can be done while you're driving, it runs very quickly, uh, but if we're going to have a good stretch, then I don't want it to get as blustery in here as it probably otherwise is going to do so. Alright, that lets us know all is complete. It transforms again. Other than the exhaust notes, if I had it back in comfort, this is now really quiet and gentle inside here, and even just the twisty slip roads good feel to them. So, I think we might have a small de-restricted section that is going to get restricted for some roadworks, but let's see if we can head out. Foot down, unfortunately. Not quite as much of a clear run as I would have loved to have had straight away. Out of some roadworks so we can drop some gears. Let's go down to uh, third gear. Wow, okay, yeah, this is where you can feel it slightly squirming from the amount of power. incredibly quickly for a BMW Z4 right now. 
picks up very quickly, gets a little bit quieter. Ah, one of the older siblings were going past just there. Back on the power, fifth gear, heading down towards the corner, but again, plenty of speed. And to be honest, it sits composed enough. Start to get a few more drops on the windscreen. But it's definitely, I mean, I'm in Sport Plus, don't forget, I could put it in comfort mode. It's definitely firm, and the steering is very heavy as well, perhaps artificially so. This kind of speed, I'm feeling that I'm really fighting with the steering wheel. 200 kilometers an hour or so to uh, have to keep gentle curves of the car. Oh, watch out for the truck that's moving over in front, the truck that's on the back. So I think just for a, uh, a fairness comparison, let's press the button to put the car into comfort, soften things up, make sure we go automatic on the gearbox, and just try that other character, that other personality of it again. And immediately, yeah, it's much softer. Problem solved in that respect. Much, much softer. The auto gearbox is very responsive to a firmer press of the throttle pedal. It instantly drops some gears. But after all of that, let's go back into Sport Plus, back into manual, drop some gears. Now we've got some sunshine ahead of us. Open it up again, foot down to the floor. 3 to 200. 220, oh, auto upshift, and then I manually upshifted one more than that turn, automatically upshift to the red line. We go onto the brakes, we've got a car in front of us. So it doesn't, or in that setting at least, didn't automatically hold the gears. I mean, you, f you feel that it's this little thing moving very, very quickly, really quickly in fact. You don't get so many bangs out of it as well when you're much higher in the rev range. Those are more at the bottom end, the kind of fun end, the around town or just gently driving. Oh, there we go. Take Well, no, I don't take that back. That was slightly lower in the revs. Just lifting off, letting it run. <laughs> Let's take this exit. Let the revs come down. Keep waiting, keep waiting, keep waiting. Oh, maybe that was too early still. The turbo spooled up. off the autobahns and nearly returning to Manhart. So I'm cruising in comfort, pop the roof back down, hoping that it's not going to rain. In fact, actually here, it looks all right. It's been changing very, very quickly. In comfort mode though, it really is a completely different character. And of course, this is where you have stop start and we can talk about that with something we're going to be showing you in just a moment, but your usual creature comforts and the car is loaded with technology. All the things you might want, your wireless charging pads, your safety systems, your tech in terms of the screen, the touch screens, infotainment, it's all in here. Everything that you would kind of imagine a car like this was going to have. Um, if I pull down, or go to manual, we're into sport on the gearbox, brings it back into life. In fact, let's just go back into sport very quickly. Sport plus, big fan of that right now. Uh, keep it in um, manual. We are headed this way, just down back to the showroom again. Listen to that. Even going like 25 kilometers per hour, the sound is just incredible. And then if I pull up just here for a moment, let me just, while we're in sport mode and the engine is warm, pop it into park. All right, have a listen. It's just a crazy, 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 crazy sound. I've enjoyed driving this, and I definitely feel like I need an exhaust along these lines on the Supra. I've been really impressed by this. The car is a lot of fun, but I tell you what, the gloomy weather is quickly arriving, and I think we've got an N2 competition that is probably revving inside. But to wrap up some conclusions on the car, as well as something else that I still need to show you. Firstly though, this is clearly a car that is ideal as a weekend toy, as a car for taking for blasts out in the countryside, but I would say less so for those high-speed runs on the de-restricted German autobahns. The big thing for me though, the sound of that is just phenomenal, and I clearly need to consider something like this on the Supra. An interesting topic of conversation though a lot of the car is as i said earlier developed and engineered between bmw and toyota but this with 100 horsepower more and over 100 newton meters of torque more still manages to retain a lot of its balance it's a very composed car it all works together chassis gearbox engine power the whole setup all comes together some design touches i really like around the front they've gone for the full black dual kidney grills rather than the normal contrast 
fixed and just emphasized some of these aero lines that you have around the front bumper and splitter as well. Sitting a touch lower makes it look that ever so slightly more sporty and you also have Manhart's concave one wheels too. Again, the gold stripes and I really like this detail, the air breather behind the front wheels for allowing air to come out and those extra gold touches really nicely emphasize that too. The Z4 itself, that two seat open top format, the way the boot or the way I should say the roof sits on top of the boot as opposed to having a deck that has to fold open means you don't really sacrifice too much in terms of the space back here. You've got a pretty small opening to get your luggage in but you do have a lot of room actually inside once you've managed to do so. Anyway, the thing I need to show you on the inside that Manhart are just launching, which you will find a link about down below, is this product which is quite relevant. So what this does is it connects to the system, hides away, and basically tells the car's computer various different things. I'm just gonna turn it on for the moment. Oh yes, always so, so, so epic. So it tells it a number of things. For example, it could tell the car that all is well with the OPF if it doesn't have one. All is well with the cat if it doesn't have one. It could disable stop start. It can also disable the fact that you get the sound out of the speakers if you don't like that. So a few things that you can configure. There's gonna be more info about that down below. But just while we're sat back in here, that's with the valves closed, just so you could hear the difference pretty obviously. I think just while it's warming up, if we go into, uh, put it into comfort mode here. So this is the quieter mode. I think just after sitting for a minute, we need to let it warm just to open up the valves, but you can hear the difference hugely. It doesn't have anything like that snap off the back of it. There we go, just opened. <laughs> it's instantly so much louder. <laughs> This thing is mental, genuinely. What a ridiculous, ridiculous sound. I mean, everything else about the Z4 M40i, you can see up here at the top of the screen, I showed when I first drove the car and had a full launch. So if you'd like to go through the entire settings and screens and displays and everything, you'll be able to find that video. But you've got that digital dashboard, you've got the touch screen in the center. It all comes together and works really, really nicely. I think it's a great, great, great interior for the type of car that we're looking at. The seats are good as well, supportive, nicely designed, the way the stitching works around the back. You've got a pocket here as well, small little uh, compartment or container to go through towards the uh, the rear as well. You've got the armrest that opens up, cup holders present inside there, USB-C charging, lots of your usual kind of convenience functions that you'd want out of it. And of course, it's a Roadster whose roof mechanism can be done incredibly quickly. Press the button, it literally folds up and over. No secondary part to go at the back as well. That is it. And then it will close the windows afterwards, should you wish. It is that simple and it does that which is still as ever insane anyway we will turn it off for now the end of today's drive which has been quite something and uh yeah intrigued me a lot so thank you very much to manhart for the opportunity to take out the mh z4 440 i hope you've enjoyed today's video to get a little bit of the experience and to think a bit too about what i should do on the supra for now though that is all thank you very much for your support as always guys that's it for this time and i'll see you again very soon cheers